<laughs> well, so it's kind of a long answer, sure. but. Um, I'm Rebecca Gilbert. I'm a printmaker. I live in South Philadelphia. Well, um, there's a man named Forrest Fenn that lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And probably about 10 years ago, he found out he was sick and um, he wanted to do something special. So up Leading to that point, he has a really interesting life. He did all kinds of things and had amassed this incredible collection of treasures, jewelry that's hundreds of years old from around the globe, gold coins and things of that sort. When he found out he was sick, he decided to fill a treasure chest with um, some of these treasures and to place that treasure chest somewhere um, in the mountains that he knew and loved all, loved all of his life in northern New Mexico, the mountains north of Santa Fe. And then he wrote a poem that contains nine clues, allegedly to where one might go and find this treasure chest. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where and hint of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. But when I heard the story, I really just felt um, like I could relate to it so much. Um, not in terms of you know, being sick or what led to him you know, having this project, but the idea behind the project itself you know, allegedly, and I choose to believe there is an actual treasure that exists out in the wilderness. Um, but really, uh, I think anyone that goes to search for this treasure is going to find all kinds of treasures along the way in just getting off the couch, getting out of the house, traveling and experiencing the great outdoors. Um, also the sense of hope and adventure that goes along with going on a quest like this. So um, I definitely had to go searching for this treasure and I wrote a proposal and the Center for Emerging Visual Artists awarded me a grant to travel to New Mexico to do an artist residency called Ocho. Well, I should tell you, I read Forrest Fenn's poem and I determined that the first clue pointed to the confluence of the Red River and the Rio Grande. Looking at the map, um, the closest little village I could find was called Cuesta. And I'll be damned, there was an artist residency in Cuesta in the middle of nowhere, a town with a population of like less than a thousand, I believe, had an artist residency with an etching press. So I applied and then I got the grant and I went. So while I was there, I did search for the treasure and I did a lot of hikes and um, I spent a lot of time drawing and just taking in the countryside and again, searching for um, you know, my own personal treasures um, in addition to the chest. Well, I didn't find the chest. Um, I did find so many wonderful and beautiful and rich things and I had such a rich experience. And um, so I'm uh, working on a body of work that um, explores all of these images and treasures so that I can share them. 
Um, but one image that I thought really um, served as a good metaphor um, for this magical place, um, Cuesta, were these incredible ant mounds that were everywhere. Everywhere I went, there were these, I mean, enormous ant mounds, ant mounds that were four feet wide, little ones, big ones, really interesting shapes, ant mounds like I had never seen before. Um, and if you've seen any of my body of work, you know that I'm already drawn to dirt and piles as imagery um, and metaphors for um, various things, building and hunger and craving. So um, obviously these ant mounds called to me right away, but I also felt like it was a great metaphor for um, the landscape, the mountains, um, the community, building, sense of home. Um, so I drew some and that's where this image came from. Um, the red and the blue um, puddles represent the Red River and the Rio Grande. And then, you know, the path that weaves through all of these entrances you know, really is just to represent all the paths that wind around that area. Um, and the clouds are just to represent the majesty in the wide open space. The way that I hope the mounds will um, recede in space is just to represent, you know, again, more than one viewpoint and um, something that really struck me out there with the wide open spaces and huge sky is that it really kind of messed with your perception. It was difficult to judge distance or how far something was um, and scale. So, you know, from my casita, there was a mountain and a volcano. Um, one looked way bigger than the other and one looked way closer than the other, but it really was the opposite. So um, I drew from several points of view from several ant mounds to create this form, which um, I think will look like it flaps in space. And I think even when all the shading and contrast is added, um, it will make you feel like you're not sure if you're looking at something straight on or maybe a little bit from the top. Rebecca's show, titled Wonder, opened at Philadelphia's prestigious Print Center in December of 2016. In March of 2017, while the show was still running, I caught up with her to talk about how she felt about the body of work now that it was complete and the public has had a chance to see it. I feel great about this body of work. Um, I feel like I managed to achieve everything I set out to do. And once I had time to sit back and reflect on all the completed pieces and how they work together and what they say and what they do, you know, I realized that all the threads that I hoped would tie them together, you know, the story of Forrest Fenn, all the common themes that I had been exploring over the years, I think exist there and more clearly than before. Usually when I finish a body of work and exhibit it, um, you know, there's a rush that I experience. And then oftentimes there's kind of a crash. It's like a sense of loss or disappointment for the body of work being finished, but I'm not experiencing that this time. Um, I'm feeling really inspired and actually really excited about the work that I'm starting on now. And I'm already kind of like waist deep into it. I feel like I am moving on and it's still connected and the work that I'm making is new and different. I'm still exploring seeing, but um, <clears throat> maybe in a more literal sense, a more optical sense, I'm looking back to like op art from the 60s and uh, just thinking about illusions and you know the same theme that I've been kind of exploring of like searching and seeing the beauty in front of you I'm working on some kind of tricky pieces that um, have him hidden images and hidden messages. So um, the artwork, like the prints themselves are really uh, forcing the viewer to look into the print 
for the maybe hidden treasure. But um, aesthetically, I think they tie together in terms of like detail um, and intricacy, but I think they also will look a lot different, maybe more closely related to some of my Cosmo mounds with the, uh, I guess, kind of trippy color explorations.